Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to my channel. This is Pradeep and you're watching Vlog of Note. So the Samsung Galaxy S20, the regular, the Samsung Galaxy S20 Plus, the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra have now launched in India for pretty astronomical prices. But before you rush out there and buy them, maybe watch this video about the processor. Let's get started. So this story starts a while back, but we'll take it up from last year. The Samsung Galaxy S10, yes, that was last year's phone. Samsung apparently made a generational shift with the Samsung Galaxy S20, and that's why they're called the Samsung Galaxy S20 series. Anyway, the Samsung Galaxy S10 had two processors in it. A lot of you may know this, but Samsung uses two series of processors. The first is the Exynos processor, which they make themselves. And the second is a Snapdragon processor, which is obviously made by Qualcomm. Now, usually I'm okay with Samsung using the Exynos processor because it gives us a better price in India and other markets. The US gets the Snapdragon processor and they can have whatever price they want. The Samsung phones are around about the same price that they are in the US in India and I'm really happy about that. <clears throat> Apple, but the trade-off has always been that the Exynos processors have been marginally slower than the Snapdragon processors, until last year of course. Last year with the Samsung Galaxy S10, we had the Exynos 9820 in India and other markets and in the US we had the Snapdragon 855. Now the Exynos 9820 first of all was an 8 nanometer processor, so obviously it was less efficient than the Snapdragon version. Also, it was less powerful. The internet is full of videos comparing the Exynos processor to the Snapdragon processor and it always loses. Now, if we waited for a little bit of time, towards the latter half of last year, Samsung gave us the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 and the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus, which in India shipped with the Exynos 9825. Now, the Exynos 9825 was actually slower than the Snapdragon 855 Plus, which was launched towards the latter half of last year. But on the other hand, the difference wasn't all that that much. Also, the Exynos 9825 was a 7 nanometer processor and that helped in battery performance. Then we fast forward to this year with the Samsung Galaxy S20, S20 Plus and the S20 Ultra. Well, the Exynos side of things, we have the Exynos 990. Unfortunately, this was supposed to be the Exynos 9830, but as you know, Samsung really sucks at names. So we have the Exynos 990 and on the Snapdragon side, we have the Snapdragon 865. Now the Exynos 990 is actually a lot slower than the Snapdragon 865. So in this video, I thought we'd do a comparison of the benchmarks that can be achieved with each one of these processors. The Snapdragon 865 versus the Exynos 990 on specs alone differ in the following four areas. One in terms of the CPU architecture. The Snapdragon series of processor has a Cortex A77 and the Exynos has a Mongoose processor, which is Samsung's custom CPU architecture, plus the Cortex A76. Obviously, the A76 is slower. Also, when it comes to clock speed, the Snapdragon has 2.84 GHz. The Exynos processor has 2.7 GHz. When it comes to connectivity, the Snapdragon processor, because of the X55 excellent modem, has an upload speed of 3 Gbps, whereas the Exynos processor has an upload speed of 422 Mbps. It's not even close. And finally, when it comes to AI, because Samsung is all about big speed these days, the Snapdragon processor has a hexagon AI unit, whereas the Exynos processor has a dual core NPU, which is a lot, lot slower. Now let's come to the actual benchmarks. We have five benchmarks for you. I will link to the website in the description in an excellent article by B-Bomb right next to that like button. The first benchmark is Antutu. This tests the entire phone and the Snapdragon processor manages a score of 587K, whereas the Exynos processor manages a score of 512K, which is a lot, lot slower. Then we move over to Geekbench, which tests purely the hardware, the Snapdragon processor has a single core score of about 922 and a multi-core score of about 3300. The Exynos processor usually used to perform better than the Snapdragon when it came to single core performance. However, this time on Geekbench 5, the Exynos processor has a single core score of about 850 and a multi-core score which does not even cross 3000. It's about 2700, so a rather dismal performance. Then let's move on to 3D Mark. Now the Adreno series of GPUs on the Snapdragon processors have always been legendary. However, this time at least, Samsung has improved the performance of their Mali G77 GPU so that the Exynos and the Snapdragon are around about the same when it comes to 3D Mark performance. 
If you look at OpenGL as well as Vulkan, the Snapdragon has a slight edge, but it's very, very slight. Then we move on to PC Mark, and here I have to point out something interesting. Now the Exynos device on test here is the Samsung Galaxy S20, obviously, but the Snapdragon device on test is the Vivo IQ3. Yeah, don't ask me, that's Vivo. Anyway, it is not the Samsung Galaxy S20 rocking the Snapdragon processor. Hence, on PC Mark, when it comes to Work 2.0 test, the Snapdragon device actually scores less with 10K performance. And when it comes to the Exino side of things, it has 12K performance. This is probably due to Samsung's optimization on F2FS, which they implemented with the Galaxy Note 10. Then finally, we come to AI22. Now this is an artificial intelligence test and due to the hexagon processing unit, the Snapdragon processor actually manages a score of 454K, which is 454,000. And the Exynos processor manages a score of only about 100,000. So it's a lot slower. Hey, on the plus side, if you want to look at it that way, the Exynos processor could actually be really bad at identifying an image of an object or a person. And as you know, Samsung's AI processing and scene optimizer goes completely berserk whenever it sees an image of a person. So this could actually be a good thing. So if you are in India or in any market that actually gets the Exynos series of processor, here are your options. One, you could take a flight from here to the United States and then pick up a Samsung Galaxy S20 running the Snapdragon processor. Or two, you could actually wait for the Note 20, which could have the Exynos 995. Now, granted, there is absolutely no information available about this as of now, and it definitely will be slower than the Snapdragon 865 or the Snapdragon 865 Plus for that matter. But at least the difference will not be that embarrassing. And the third option that you have, you can actually wait till early next year when Samsung is going to launch in India the Samsung Galaxy S20 Lite, the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Lite, which will actually have the Snapdragon 865, which will be faster than their last year's flagship and cheaper. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. It means a lot to me. Drop your comments on the idiocy and the stupidity that is Samsung when it comes to their processors in the comment section down below. As always, please go over to YouTube and subscribe to the Vlog of Nerd channel. Ring that notification bell so that you never miss a video. And I will see you guys in the next week's episode.